Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this grade 11 physics tutorial, I'm going to go over how to derive the five equations for uniform acceleration. And for you grade 12 students, if you want to see me derive those same five equations using calculus, then stay till the end because I'll show you how. All right, so we're going to start with a VT graph. We're going to take an object that is accelerating. And an object that is accelerating is just going to be a diagonal line because this is going to be a constant acceleration. Now, I'm not going to put this diagonal line through the origin because that would mean it has an initial velocity of zero, and that would be a very specific situation. So we're going to give it some initial velocity that we'll label just VI. And then it will reach some final velocity here which we'll call VF. And it will occur over some time interval between here and here, which we'll just call delta T. Now, to find the acceleration, all we have to do is figure out the slope of this VT graph. The slope of a VT graph is acceleration. So we can write acceleration equals its rise over run. So first, our change in our Y coordinates. Right, so this coordinate is VF, and then subtract our other coordinate down here, which is VI. And that's divided by the change in our X coordinates, which is our run from here to here. You could call it a T0 and T1 if you like, but either way, the difference between them is going to be our time interval delta T. So this is our first equation of motion. Now to get our second equation of motion, instead of finding the slope of this VT graph, we are going to find the area under the graph. Now the area under a VT graph tells us displacement. Now this is a trapezoid, and so to figure out the area of a trapezoid, what we're essentially going to be doing is finding the average of our Y coordinates, which would be right in the middle there, then you'll notice that this triangle here, if we rotate it, will perfectly fit into this missing space right here. So now we sort of have a rectangle. And so the area of a trapezoid is simply that average point, which is just VI plus VF divided by 2, and then multiply it by the base of our rectangle here, which is delta t. So that's how you find the area of a trapezoid, and that is our second equation of motion. Now, to find our third, fourth, and fifth equation of motion, what we're going to do is rearrange equation one for different variables, and then substitute those variables in to equation two. Now, there are five equations of motion for um, five variables. Our five variables are initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, displacement, and time. And each equation is missing one of these variables. So notice the first equation here is missing displacement. So there's no displacement in the first equation. And in the second equation, there's no acceleration. So we already have these two. Let's go ahead and find the equations that are missing the other three. So to find the equation that is missing, let's say, final velocity, what we need to do is solve equation one for final velocity and substitute into equation two. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start with equation one. I'll multiply both sides by time. So I'll get A times delta T is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity. And then I'll add initial velocity to both sides of the equation. So we get initial velocity plus A delta T is equal to final velocity. All right, so now I can take this equation for final velocity and substitute it into equation two. So here's equation two. We have delta D is equal to initial velocity plus final velocity, but final velocity, I'm going to substitute this equation here. So we have VI plus A delta T. And that is all divided by 2. 
and all multiplied by time. So this is essentially our third equation, but we're going to clean it up a little bit here. So notice here we have like terms, so vi and vi. So that's going to give us 2vi. And then we have plus a delta t. And that's going to be all over 2, but what I'm going to do is separate the 2 for each term. So I'm going to put this term divided by 2 and this term divided by 2. And that's all times time. So in the first term, you'll see that the 2's cancel. Next, I'm going to take this time and distribute it into the brackets, multiplying both terms in the brackets by time. This will give us delta D is equal to, so we have VI times time, plus, so we have this half here, so instead of dividing by 2, I'm just going to multiply by a half, times A, and then we have time times time, which gives us time squared. And this is the third equation that you would normally see written as. Notice it is the one that is missing final velocity. All right, let's do the same thing, but let's find the one that's missing initial velocity now. So I'm going to take equation one. Since I want to eliminate initial velocity, that's what I'm going to solve for in equation one to substitute into equation two. So we have acceleration. Again, I'll multiply both sides by time. Is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'll bring initial velocity to this side of the equation, make it positive, and then I'll bring a delta t to the other side and make it negative. So we have vf minus a delta t. So there's our equation for initial velocity. This is what I'm going to substitute into equation two. So we have delta d is equal to so now we have initial velocity, but I'm going to replace it with final minus a delta t. And then we have this plus vf here. And once again, all over 2 and multiplied by time. All right, so we have like terms again. So we have vf and vf, so let's add those. That'll give us 2vf. And then we have minus a delta t. And then all over 2, but I'm going to put the 2 for each term. So this term is divided by 2, and this term is divided by 2, and multiplied by time. So once again, the 2 here is cancel. The time we're going to distribute into the bracket into each term. And we'll get delta d is equal to vf times time minus one half a delta t squared. So there is our fourth equation. All right, so now that we have equations three and four, let's look for equation five, where time is no longer in our equation. So to do that, we'll have to solve equation one for time. And I'm just going to cross multiply these terms here. So I will get time is equal to vf minus vi all over a. And that is what I'm going to substitute into equation two. So when I do that, I get delta d is equal to, so we have this vi plus vf all over two. And that's going to be multiplied by time, which is now substituted as vf minus vi all over a. So in the denominator, I have 2a. So I'll multiply both sides of the equations by 2a, and that gives me 2a delta d is equal to, here we have, I'm going to write vf first, because it'll help you see something. So vf plus vi, all times by vf minus vi. So if you love math, you might notice this is a difference of squares. Um, if you don't notice that, that's fine. You can foil it, right, like so. But if you recognize it's a difference of squares, then you know it's just going to be vf squared minus vi squared. And there is your last equation. All right, so for grade 11s, uh, 
You do not need to know what I'm about to do, but if you're curious, you can stick around. Grade 12s, you wanted to see me derive this with calculus? I'll derive it with calculus. So let's look at a motion graph. We're going to start with a motion graph. So here is a, a DT graph. If we're accelerating, it's going to be curved like so. And then if we move to a VT graph, well, you need to find the slopes of the tangents throughout, and then you can get a, a VT graph that would look something like we did in the beginning of this video. And then you can get an AT graph, which would look something like so. Okay, so this is our DT, VT, and AT. Now in grade 11, we say, all right, the slopes here will give you your VT, and the slope of your VT give you your AT. If we're using calculus, it's not really the slope anymore. Well, it is, but there's an easier way to calculate that slope, and it's the derivative. So we can find the derivative of our dt to find our vt, and the derivative of vt to find our at. And going backwards, we would find the area under the curve. But in calculus, you do the opposite, and you find the integral. So, acceleration then, we can label acceleration as simply being the second derivative of displacement. I'm going to write displacement as x, because it's going to be linear, just moving in one dimension along x. And I'm going to denote the second derivative um, to be just these two dots. All right. So that's acceleration. Now, if I want to go backwards, I need to find the integral. So let's take the integral of both sides. And this is going to be an indefinite integral. And I'm integrating with respect to time here. Now, if I'm going backwards here, that's just going to be the second derivative of x just becomes the first derivative of x. All right, so how do you find the integral of at with respect to time. Now you may or may not have done this in high school, but let's look at say x squared. Now if you want to find the derivative of x squared, well you just do the power rule. You multiply by the exponent, so you get 2x, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, so that becomes 1. Well, if you wanted to go back up, you do the exact opposite. The integral is the exact opposite. So what you would do is you would add 1, to the exponent, so it becomes 2, and then divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 leaves you with 1. However, you need to add a constant, which represents an initial condition. Because 1x squared plus a constant, finding that derivative would still be 2x, because the derivative of a constant is just 0. All right, now that we know that, here, I'm taking the integral with respect to time. So if I just have a, what I'm going to do, you can imagine a as being um, a times t to the 0. So if you're finding the integral of that, well, what you're going to do is add 1 to the exponent of t. So we're going to get a times t to the power of 1, and then divide by 1. So there you go, a times t. However, do not forget that initial condition. Now, instead of writing it as c, since it's an initial condition, well, we're solving for the first derivative of displacement. First derivative of displacement is velocity. And the initial condition then would be initial velocity. So there is your first equation. This will be final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus a delta t. There you go. Final equals initial plus a delta t. So that is equation one. You can rearrange that equation. If it doesn't look like equation one from before, uh, rearrange it, and you can get it to be acceleration equals final minus initial over time, which is what we saw it as before. All right, so now that we have this equation, let me write it down again over here. So we have initial velocity plus a delta t. 
that's going to be equal to the first derivative of displacement. All right, so now that I have uh, the first derivative of displacement, which is velocity, and I want to go backwards to find position, I'm going to integrate both sides again. So when I do that, well, the first derivative of displacement just becomes x, right, which is our final position. And now we need to find the integral of this with respect to time. All right, so vi, again, imagine there's a t to the power of 0 there. So that'll become vi raised to the power of 0 up by 1. So it becomes t to the power of 1. And then divide by 1. Now over here, we have a times t to the power of 1. So increase that exponent by 1, which gives you 2. And then divide by that exponent. Two. And then we also need some sort of initial condition, which we will call our initial position xi. So if we bring xi to the other side of the equation, we get final minus initial position, which is displacement, by the way. And that equals vi times time, I've got my vector sign, plus this divided by 2 is 1 half a delta t squared. Now that's actually the third equation from our previous example. But still, once we have two equations, then we just do exactly what we did before. And we can solve one equation for one variable, substitute it into the other to get our remaining equations. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you next time.